Basketball fans, the Toronto Raptors split a pair with the Chicago Bulls after falling at the United Center 111 to 97. This is Raptors today. Key Lagastein, Paul Jones, Sherm Hamilton. Sherm, I'll start with you. The NBA came in with an agenda this year. They want to level the playing field travel wise. That's why we're seeing these home and away series, these home and home yeah. series with the Raptors and a couple of opponents. In this one, the Chicago Bulls got a chance to get a little bit more familiar with the Toronto Raptors. So is this working? Is this a system that can work for the Toronto Raptors and the rest of the league in leveling the playing field? We're going to find out, Akil. I mean, it's right now, it's an experimental situation. And, you know, it's interesting. I think the level playing field approach can only be achieved when everybody has similar amounts of home and home or home and away games back to back. That hasn't been accomplished yet. Some teams have eight, some teams have one. I think when you have that kind of disparity between them, it seems like one team may have an advantage and another team can have a disadvantage. So I don't know how, how it's looked at as an even playing field. It's a different way of doing it. It does kind of mitigate some travel situations, but it doesn't mitigate all of it. So I'm trying to figure out at this point, how has it become an even playing field if if you and I have to play eight times like that and Jonesy has to play once like that, we're at a disadvantage. He's not. So I just think that there's still got to be things that are worked out about this schedule. They're going to try it, see how it goes, see uh, the amount of complaints they get from yep. it, and then they'll decide on it again moving forward. Jones, are you buying it? No, I'm not. Uh, schedule complaints have always been there. And, you know, the league used to put something out. I don't know if they still do to have a team look at it for competitive balance. But to Sherm's point, uh, I get it with the travel. I mean, baseball does that. They go into town for three days. You get a series. You get it over with. And I understand the travel. But um, I'm just looking at simple geography. I get it if you're Toronto and you have to go two and a half hours to Miami or to Orlando and play there. It saves some time. But the rest of the travel in the east for Toronto, I mean, you have one with Philadelphia at home. It's an hour flight to Philadelphia. It's an hour flight to New York. It's an hour flight to Boston. That's your division. It's 43 minutes to Cleveland. It's 38 minutes to Detroit. It's 57 minutes to D.C. where they have another one. I'm just not sure... I get Sherm's point about being in one city and saving that travel time, but it makes it, it's like arguing about the back-to-back. -back. Some teams have more than the others. It just makes it difficult, and I don't think it's totally fair. And as Sherm says, it's not a total level playing field. Still a little tilt in there somewhere, Akil, for some teams. I'm going to switch your nickname from the principal to the travel agent. If you need to travel in the Northeast, this is the guy you got to call. But let's now focus <laughs> on the court and what's happening on the floor. Sherm, let's talk about what the Raptors had a challenge of this week, which was playing without Pascal Siakam. And, of course, fell behind in that third quarter. What were they missing when they tried to, st uh, to have that fourth quarter come back? Pascal Siakam. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There you have it. Sure. But I think overall, what we saw from the Raptors one was in the first game against Chicago, their ability to double team DeMar, get the ball out of his hands. Now you're forcing uh, Alice Caruso to make a play. You're forcing a Nick Vucevic to make a play. All these guys are different players. When you put Zach Levine back yep. into the mix, and now that pass, either the first pass or the second pass, ends up in his hands. Look, he's a very, very effective guy off the dribble, getting to the basket, shooting the ball, creating space, passing. He's just a whole different package when it comes to kicking it out of the double team. And now your defensive rotations have to be on point out of the double team. And when they're not, Zach Levine is going to hurt you. And I think they struggled with that. Their defense kind of tailed off towards the end of that game as well. And when you have a team that has now a confident number two guy who can move up the ladder to number one at any point in Zach Levine, DeMar DeRose is a smart player. He's going to extend those double teams. He's going to pull people further away from the basket so that Zach has more room to operate. And now he's operating four on three. Too much for that defense to overcome without a Pascal Siakam. And they struggled, and Chicago took advantage of that. Throws might not have gotten double digit points, but he did get a season high in yep. assists. And how much of an advantage is it for Chicago having had a full night and a lot of tape to watch that Raptors defense? And an attitude of, man, we just got our hats handed to us. We're coming home to try and fix this. And, and to a couple of Sherm's points, you look at the shooting percentage. It's very difficult to allow a team to shoot over 50% and beat them. And some of the other categories that the Raptors usually come out in front of, in, 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 you know, when, the, when it's all said and done. You look at turnovers. The Raptors turned it over more 
than they did in the game at home when they beat Chicago. And then the points off turnovers. Raptors, again, usually a plus in that category. They were a minus two in that category. So all of those little things, and again, some of it you, you can chalk up to the travel. I mean, not that Chicago didn't have to travel, but, you know, Toronto got the win. They're coming in. Who knows? Maybe a little sluggish. I just didn't see the same. Uh, the word I use with Raptors is dictate defensively. When they're able to dictate more of what the other team, they want the other team to do, they're going to be successful. Points in the paint. They had a huge advantage on Sunday night in Toronto. They were they had they were at a deficit in in the game in the loss to Chicago. So all of these little things. And Akil, to your initial question, Chicago sitting there. We got beat. We're going home. We are looking at this. We're getting Zach Levine back. We're going to fix this. All right. Give well, Chicago credit. The man that's in charge of fixing this for the Toronto Raptors is Nick Nurse. Let's check in with him after the game. It is a quite early. Yep. In the season. Well, it's um. You know, I did this a lot when I was coaching in the minor leagues, and the split happens so much, it's amazing, right? And so far, it's happened to us, I think, in all of them, right? All three of them. So I think we got five more of these. So, yeah, maybe we'll maybe we'll have a chance to figure one out here before before we go. But just didn't quite have enough juice. Didn't quite ball was really bouncing the wrong way for us even every time we got our hands on it they'd they'd come back up with it and lay it in or something um and i thought that you know just again it was rolling really bad for us most of the night a lot of a lot of in and outs a lot of layups missed a couple dunks you know that it was just kind of one of those nights hung in there and tried to make it a game of it late but just couldn't quite get her close enough and using all the guys available to you is just a matter of just trying to find something yeah to just looking for some sparks and i thought some of those guys did okay right i thought i thought you know um, Delano had a good stretch in the first, and Wancho, so did he. Had, you know, he had a couple good plays in there as well. And um, uh, Malachi came in, played okay there at the end as well. So, yep, just looking for, for, for some spark from those guys. It's a good chance to get some of them out there. With Pascal Siakam out, all eyes on Fred Van Vliet, the all-star for the Toronto Raptors, as the Raptors needed to punch up their offensive scoring. And, Sherm, let's talk about it. Three nights off, you expect a little bit of a lag from a guy who didn't get to play his usual load. Were you surprised at how effective Fred Van Vliet was when he's thrown back into the lineup? In a word, no. Okay. I mean, Fred Van Vliet is going to have impact. I, I like the fact that without Pascal there, we're seeing him look for scoring more. I think when Pascal was in the lineup, Fred was just kind of laying in the weeds, and when they needed him to, to ramp up his offense, he would make plays, especially late in the game. But I like Fred aggressive offensively early. I like him pushing the pace. I like him trying to really dissect the defense and being aggressive from the three-point line. The further away from the three-point line he shoots it is the more they get to him, and he can put it on the floor and break down people. But he's efficient. I mean, he was very, very efficient on Monday night against Chicago. You know, 10 of 19, 6 of 10 from the three-point line. And the team needed all that he brought to the table. So I'm not surprised. Fred's a leader. Fred's a, pro, a true pro. He understands how to get it done in moments of the game. And he understands how to switch gears as well when he needs to move the ball and get everybody involved. So in a word, no, but I have to give you a long answer. <laughs> all right, let's talk about Christian Coloco, Jonesy. 11-7 and seven career night in the first game against the Chicago Bulls. We and look, six blocks. Yes, 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 of course, you got to mention that. But then, look more like a rookie. How does this team kind of acclimate him because the fouls issue is kind of where they're worried about him? Well, look, let's face it. You're going to get that with a rookie, up yeah. and down. I, I love, first of all, let me state this. I love what the young man's doing, the way he seamlessly fit into what the Raptors are trying to do. He understands his role, and I think that's the biggest part of it. His role is play defense, rebound, set good, set good screens, and kind of stay out of the way offensively and I, I love what he's doing as for the foul trouble that's a reputation thing and i thought there was a real kind of uh cute comment in there by nick nurse who said to the referees after a few games they'll learn that this guy was one of the top shot blockers last year and they'll understand that that's what he does and that speaks to gaining a reputation because that's going to help him right now he's getting a lot of kind of excuse me fouls where there's a little bump and the referees are calling him for a foul or he'll block a shot and maybe on the follow through he'll hit a hand or something like that and they'll call him as a shooting foul. All you can do if you're the coaching staff is continue to work with him, show him tape and just kind of work on his positioning. It's kind of like 
a kid that's just learning how to drive. It's okay when it's dry, but what happens when it's wet and there's a little snow and you just, things you gotta kind of be aware of as you move through it. And I think that's what they're working with with Christian. And he's bright, he understands the game, he'll overcome these challenges. And I'm telling you, this kid is going to be, he's already been and he's going to be a force going forward defensively on this team and in the league. I just wanna add to what Jonesy was saying. He's just gonna have to go through it. You know, he's yeah. going to have to make these mistakes. He's going to have to grow from them. The team can't really stop him from creating fouls or getting into foul trouble. They can talk to him. They can admonish him. But in those moments, he's going to have to make decisions. And I think that comes with the reps. That comes with the attention. That comes with understanding how to communicate with officials. It's all the time that needs to be accrued in order for that experience to be developed. And I think that's going to happen very, very quickly for this young man based on the opportunities he's getting. You know, Sherm had a word no on the first answer. He just used the word in that answer, experience. Okay, all right. Well, from the Raptors, big man in the middle to the snipers on the wing, let's hear from Gary Trent and Fred Van Vliet. It's tough just having the back-to-backs um, in this way, like you guys have had like those home-and-homes or to kind of have them this early, especially if you're thinking about the younger guys? Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't go that far with it. You know, it was just uh, another game. Obviously, we played yesterday. Uh, you know, got to be better, try to get the win. It's always most importantly, and we didn't get that done tonight. So, What would you say was um, the hiccup on offense? Mm, I don't know. You know, I would say it was just a... The way the ball was bouncing, you know, we try to go out there and do certain things and follow the game plan, and, you know, we just came up short, you know, so go back to the drawing board and come up with another game plan and try to execute a W. Does it almost feel like you're preparing for a completely different game? You guys only had to look at DeMar, and then you have DeMar and Zach out there? Yeah, you could say that, you know. It kind of gives you an, uh, a feel for what's going to go on. You obviously just played them last game. You know, we've done that a couple of times this year, whether it was in Miami a couple of times, playing them back to back as well in the same, you know, a couple of days. So, you know, it's just the scheduling, but, you know, got to roll with it. Uh, what did you make of the bench performance today? Yeah, everybody came in, you know, ready. Everybody's coming in, waiting for opportunity. So when everybody get that opportunity, hopefully they come in and showcase and, you know, show that they're ready. Probably not in the favor that it's so early in the season for you guys, especially the young ones. Yeah, I mean, it's uh adjustment for sure. It's different. So we'll see. Um, the NBA is full of changes, and um, you just got to be able to adapt and adjust. This is something new um, since I've been in the league. So uh, we'll see. It's um, You know, you don't want to split them, but it seems that's the way it's been going for us. Um, it's tough to, you know, play the same team 24 hours in between. So, uh, um, you know, we got to find a way to try to, you know, win both, or we'll just see the rest of the league balance itself out. I think, you know, there's – all of the records throughout the league and the standings are kind of, you know, spread out. So um, we'll see at, at the end of the year how it stacks up. But, um, you know, a tough one, tough one for us tonight. Was there anything you noticed offensively that was just off for you guys tonight? Yeah, I thought they were a little more physical and they they, um, they found a real um, stretch. I think the game was obviously one in the third quarter, if you look at it. But uh, they are a little more physical. Um, it's just, you know, trying to find the right – flow of physicality with the whistle and um, we just didn't have that pop um, you know on the offensive end it was kind of stalled out still ended up with 24 assists which is okay it's not great but um, you know you would like to to obviously score or shoot a little bit better so we got to get some rest and you know get ready for Wednesday. What type of conversations are you having with Christian? He had the experience of going up against Luca and then DeMar and then now he gets <coughs> another look of DeMar and Zach. When you're asking him for what you need, what do those conversations look like? Uh, just, he's just got to just be a sponge and just keep downloading the information. And um, it's his first back-to-back, -back, right? So um, last night was the most minutes he's ever played, you know, so 31 last night, 29, 21 tonight. Um, he's just got to keep, you know, absorbing the information. There's going to be some growing pains. Um, but he's, he's attentive and he listens and he's playing as hard as he can. So he'll continue to grow and get better for us. But... Um, obviously, you know, he's a young player. The, the way the NBA is, you need your bench to kind of be your life raft. And there's going to be nights where you need him to win the game and nights where you need him to keep you in the game. And um, 
I'm confident in this group. We got a lot of talent on the bench. I think it's just a matter of putting it together and finding, you know, the right rotations and the right uh, rhythm for those guys. It just seems kind of out of sorts sometimes, especially, you know, tonight on the back-to-back, guys are a little tired. So we'll see how we can keep tweaking and just find the right fit and the right lineup so, you know, we maximize the most out of those minutes because we're going to need those guys. It's a long season. If you were paying attention last night, you saw the words vote inscribed across the chest of the Toronto Raptors players and across the NBA as the NBA is pushing for its citizens, its members, its players to get out and vote in the U.S. midterm elections. Jonesy, I'll start with you. The NBA is taking a very strong stance on this subject. Yeah. Why do you think it has? Well, I mean, in the whole uh, social movement, I mean, it was something, and I, and I can say this as, you know, I say this as a, as a African, person of African descent. In the U.S., that vote was a privilege and it wasn't always granted and now these players are recognizing that people sacrifice for for others to be able to vote for them to get what they're doing and they're using their platform to tell others look this is how you can make a difference there are ways to change things i, I mean people complain about things not working and the system no, learn the system and make it work for you. Find the candidate in your area, the senator, the, the, the House of Representatives person, whoever it might be, and vote for them. Get to know them. Learn their platforms and go out and vote. That's a way you can change things and make a statement yourself. And the NBA doesn't want to distract anybody from doing that with games or give excuses. So they've shut it down. I admire them for that. And, and, and I think it's something that uh, is very commendable. And I love the fact that the younger generation now is seeing how important it is and is pushing it going forward. They have platforms and I love the way they're using it. Sherman, sure, it's the second time the Toronto Raptors have worn the jersey. They wore it, of course, earlier this season in regards to the Canadian voting situation. Talk to us about what this organization is focusing on and how important it is for them to get involved in this conversation. Well, when you think about it, I mean, there are a lot of American and non-Canadian players on this team, but it's very important that when you're a citizen and you're occupying space in another country, living there, earning an income, it's very important to recognize and respect what's happening in whatever country you're in. And we had an election, and it's just the right thing to do for this organization and the players to really encourage Canadians to get out and vote. And I think now we're seeing them do the same thing for the U.S. elections. Listen, it all matters. It all is something that we need to be involved in. And as Jonesy said, the platform is available. They have the bright lights on them. What better time or better way to use that platform than to say, hey, get out there and vote. It's across our chest. We're talking about it. We're trying to say it's a necessity for us to do in order to get the changes that we want. Look, politics is one of the most divisive things in our world. Yep. It can create a lot of issues, and we know how damaging it can be. So if we have a chance to vote, which a lot of people have died and struggled for our opportunity to do that, I think we've got to take advantage of it. And even though it's not our election right now, we should support the messaging of the NBA to say, hey, all you Americans, get out there and vote and make a difference. Don't not take advantage of this opportunity. And right here, the home of the Toronto Raptors in the city of Toronto, they had a mayoral election recently, and it was an all-time low in voter turnout, so we echo the same sentiments yep. to our citizens right here in Toronto. Get out and vote. And who else is echoing the sentiments? The Toronto Raptors and their front office. Here's a TikTok from them. Make informed choices. Voting in the election is the most direct way for you to have a voice in your city, in your community. And that's why it's the most important to vote. Make informed choices. For so long, people in power have tried to deny and suppress people's rights to vote for a reason. They know that there is power in voting, there is power in each person having their own voices. That's why it's so important for each and every person to do their part and get out and vote. 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 The Toronto Raptors have been through the gauntlet in terms of quality of opponent recently, and things should lighten up at least in terms of the wins and losses of those opponents, but you never take your opponent lightly. Up next, the Houston Rockets sitting at 2-9, and nine, and they've got a young man, Kevin Porter, who just recently inked a new long-term deal, and he is a lot to deal with. Jonesy, talk to us about exactly the kinds of problems he presents. He's averaging career numbers right now. Well, he's a really dynamic player, Akil, and that's the first thing that the Raptors are going to have to deal with. He brings the ball up here, and you know, the specter of the three-point shot is so big in the NBA right now. Watch the guys on the perimeter defensively. They spread out. They want to guard the three-point line, and Kevin Porter Jr. realizes it's open behind them. If I can break my defender down, I've got all kinds of room in the paint, and he does just that. 
Watch him right here, a quick crossover into the lane and finishes at the rim with no shot blocking, no protection at the rim. He's also very good when it comes to helping his opponent, helping his teammates out and breaking down opponents. Here, he realizes, again, he's got a matchup, gets into the paint, watch Kenyon Martin Jr. doing a nice job, moving into space, his defenders turned his back, and then a great pass for the finish by Kenyon Martin. When speaking of the Houston Rockets, Sherm, the other side of the court is Jalen Green and his explosiveness. Talk about how he compliments what they're doing. Well, Jalen Green, like Kevin Borders, uber athletic, and when he gets out in transition, he becomes very explosive. Kevin Porter Jr. sees him over the top. He's running the lane. Look at the angle he takes to really eliminate Trey Young's ability to defend him, and then when it's above the rim, this guy is out there with the best of them, finishing with force. Also defensively, he's going to be required to do some things. Here you see him moving his feet, and as soon as that ball is coughed up, he's off to the races. He catches the ball. Now look at the distance he covers without a dribble, all the way to the basket, able to finish with his length. Steven Silas, a young coach in the NBA, has a young core to work with moving forward. All right, gentlemen, enough compliments for this group. Let's talk about <laughs> stopping them. Jonesy, I'll start with you. Yeah. What do the Raptors need to do to stop these young men? Well, I think you have an identity, and you play the way you do, and you stick to what you know best. And if you're the Raptors, that's being good defensively, creating turnovers, especially maybe from a young group who sometimes can be fast and loose with the ball. They like to play at a fast pace. Turn them over, see if you can get some live ball turnovers, get up to the other end, score off the turnovers. That's, I, I think if you're Toronto, that's what you have to do. Stick to your own identity and con continue to develop what you do best. All right, Sherman, your keys? I think when you talk about this Houston team, to Jonesy's point, those are young guys. And I, I think you don't want them to feel confident. They're very good in the open court, uber athletic. You don't want to get them running up and down. You want to keep them in the half court and make them execute with the shot clock pressing on them. And also, if you're the Raptors, if you're going to turn them over, you've got to punish them. You've got to make sure that they pay with those turnovers. And I'd like to see the Raptors be physical with this team. See how they respond. You know, they're trying to grow. They're trying to understand who they are in this league. Well, see if they can understand physically who they are, if they can fight through that mental toughness phase of the game where you've got to not pay attention to the, the fouls, you've got to not complain to the officials, you've got to play through tough moments, put them in those situations and see how they respond. But the Raptors are a more experienced team. You expect them to use that to their advantage. All right, it's Raptors Rockets. 7.30 p.m. is the tip-off Wednesday night, and you can catch the call on TSN, the radio call on Sportsnet 590. Big shout out to our producer, the Telestrator producer, Nikhil. That's it for myself, Nikhil Agustin, Sherm, Jonesy. We'll see you guys soon.